Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my special guest, Nick. Nick, good to see you again. Okay, this is episode 157, Free Will and How We Teach Kids We Lack It, because there's going to come a time when, you know, we're going to want to do that, and that presents challenges. Uh, before we get into this, just we're going to very briefly go over, you know, what we mean by uh, free will when people say they have it, and then why this show is important. All right. So, Nick, why, what do people generally mean when they say they have a free will? Free will means people think they can make decisions that are 100% independent of their genetics and conditioning and physical or non-physical causes. Yeah, in other words, the people believe that they can, um, they can decide what they want without things who, that are not in our, their control right. you know, deciding for them. All right, and obviously, you know, just the fact that everything is causal makes that impossible. Impos um, now, why is this important? It's important because the belief or non-belief in free will touches everything we humans do in life. Absolutely. In other words, like, you know, when we believe we have free will, we will blame ourselves for st stuff that's absolutely not up to us in any way. And when we blame ourselves, we feel guilty and that then we want to punish ourselves. And we do the same to other people. So to the extent we overcome as a world this illusion of free will, we can create a much more compassionate, intelligent world. All right. Now, so let's get on to this. Like, so, you know, eventually we're going to, like, teach kids that, you know, that you know, eventually, you know, in school, that's going to be part of the, the, the general curriculum. We don't have a free will, and I'll explain why. So I'm thinking a few things should happen before we do this. Like, for example, with evolution, even though about 50% of the American population does not believe in evolution, it's so – it's so – powerfully documented with evidence, scientific evidence, that it's pretty much taught throughout the, the 50 states. So, so I'm thinking, you know, one thing we should do, Nick, I think, is, is wait until at least 50% of the adult population gets this, you know, understands that... that, that so the topic of today's show is what to do about our children in the No Free Will Society? How do we teach? Because, like, eventually we're going to have to teach our kids that, yes, no, nothing is up to us. Nothing is up to you. Nothing is up to... to you know, we as parents, as you know, absolutely, we're all pup, you know, robots. I'm wondering People right off the bat what the age appropriateness is for that discussion. All right, well, all right. Um, I mean, you're aware movies are G, P, G, R. Let's, so let's, what, what a, uh, let's actually, all right, let's, let's put that aside. Let's, okay. let's deal with a few things first. Okay. Um, in terms of like how, let's, let's address how we're going to teach them this. Okay. One Very way. Very difficult. Yeah, one, one way I think is like we already have in our, in our um, common vernacular and the way we talk now, you know, the way we explain things, we already have expressions that really imply this, that suggest that, that things aren't up to us. For, for example, you know, when, when we do things that are wrong or we, when we don't succeed the way we might want, what will we say? We'll say, we, we'll, we'll say that we're doing the best we can. You know, don't blame me. He was doing the best he could, right? Well, I asked that to somebody else, and he said, that other meetup, that guy, he said, no, you're not always doing the best you can. So All right, but that's I crazy. Know. Of course you're always doing the best you can at the time. If you're not doing the best you can at the time with the knowledge you had at the time, why aren't you doing the best you can at the time? Exactly. I, I believe it. And I think a lot of people get that. Another thing that people get is, like, for example, let's say grandpa dies or whatever, and, you know, you're telling your kid uh, what happened. Well, you might say, well, it was God's will, you know, or like, you know, people will say that it was it was like it was fated and it was God's will, you know. And so a lot of times we'll apply this to some things in life, you know, like that. But that that's a perfect way to kind of explain to, to kids. Well, you know, we do what we do, not because of us, but because God wants us to do it. You know, we're manifesting God's will. Right. Sounds good. OK. All right. But people um, always say, well, you make choices. Not free choice. I mean, you know what I mean. Right. Now we have free will because we make choices. I mean. Now, some people are going to object, you know, well, we really shouldn't be teaching kids this because, like, kids like to take pride in, in, like, you know, like, for example, a kid learns to ride a bike. Really proud of that, right? Or learns to, like, you know, play baseball or, you know, do something. <laughs> and, and so what are we going to tell that kid? Ah, that wasn't up to you. You know, you just did it because you had to, because the universe compelled you. So some people, like, object to our telling kids this because of um, reasons like that. I'm what not objecting. I'm just saying what age do you do it? Not a young kid. I know, I know. What do you say to a kid and say that, that wasn't your free will? I mean, he 
doesn't even know what that means. I know. Well, uh, again, again, we're, we're doing this now. Obviously, we have to assume that we can communicate. So, you know, you can't tell a six-month-old that they don't have free will. What, what, what? All right. So, basically, so with this scenario, they're like, fine. We're, gonna, we're not going to lie to kids. You know, this isn't going to be a Santa Claus thing. We're going to say, well, all right, you know, when you do things that are good, when anybody does things that are good, what's the proper response? How's, how's the, the best way, the truthful way of seeing it or, or responding to it? It's not with pride, not like how great I am that I, that I did this, whatever. It's with gratitude. Well, it's all operant conditioning and classical conditioning. So when you have a child, your hedonic imperative, which is mandated by the universe or pleasure principle, is always in play. So if your kid does something that you enjoy, that you feel good about, you're going to reward them. If they do something that makes you feel terrible about yourself, you're going to penalize them. So that's how you go through life. It has right. nothing to do with free will. It has to do with uh, the parent also doesn't have a free will. It has no choice but to go towards pleasure and away from pain. So if the kid does something wrong, you could tell the, the kid might say, uh, Dad, I know I got my hand caught in a cookie jar, but I don't have a free will, as you've taught me. And you would say, okay, little Johnny, I don't have free will either, but you're not having dessert tonight because I have no choice but to ground you. Well, that's so you could just use the same medicine. Uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If the kid says, I don't have a free will, you, you can't blame me, you could say, true, but I also don't have a free will, so don't hate me for not – you know, letting you watch TV tonight. Right, or you could—that's how you would do it. Right, or you could say to them like, "Yeah, I understand that you don't have a free will, but you know, we need to teach you that it's not right. It's not in your best interest and in our best interest for you to be like putting your hand in the cookie jar. So we have to like punish you, you know, for that, or we might want to reward you, you know, when you don't, you know, because like again, both re reward and punishment serve to condition our behavior." But like, so that that's that's a really good explanation. And of he how, could say, "Why is it not good for me? I, right. I'm hungry. I want a cookie." That's a good explanation of how the world will stay the same when even kids understand that we don't have a free will. But what I'm getting at with this thing about like, you know, a kid does something, he comes home with straight A's, you know, like for for, for from school. Okay, so like, I'm talking about like how we teach kids to react to that accomplishment. And again, like, so. They, you want them to feel happy about it, right? You want them to feel really good that they've done this, but you don't want them, them to feel mistakenly that it was up to them. So, so again, so like what I'm suggesting is like, you know, what will maintain their humility while, while still allowing them to enjoy their achievements? You have them feel grateful, gra you know, have them feel gratitude that God has, has allowed them to do this good. Because the reason I, I mentioned this, Nick, is some people say, well, you know, like, you know, how are you going to, like, you know, get kids to feel good about the good they do? And again, like, so, like, one. Are you talking about self-esteem? Self-esteem. That's a big part of it. Exactly. When, when kids, like, succeed at things, they feel good about themselves. But, like, you know, in other words, we would have to, like, condition kids to feel good that they, that the universe you know, kind of like manifested itself. You might want to be a household that really talks about luck and unluck more. Uh, so the kid comes home with straight A's and you say, Johnny, how lucky you were to get that. Lucky that you have the smarts and the intelligence and that you were able to memorize. It wasn't you, you're just lucky. And then if they don't do well, they come home and you cry and say, how unlucky. Yes, that, that's good. In other words, lucky. So. Right, in other words, like it's not up to us, you know, we're lucky or unlucky. And so we, we, we take pleasure from, from being lucky, right. But the luck is really not in the grades. It's how happy the kid is about the grades. Because if he gets straight A's and you don't appreciate him or her and you, you know, act like it was expected and they can never do better, you know, in other words, they can't do well enough. So if the kid is still, like, feeling empty, like forced into – I heard Andre Agassi talk about this, about tennis. He was the world's number one tennis player, but his father made him do it, and he won everything, and he was uh, first place, but he didn't like it because he was expected to be the – so he would f succeed tremendously in tennis, but he wasn't happy about it. So he was unlucky. I mean, was he lucky or unlucky? I think he was unlucky because he wasn't happy about it. I hear so you. The, so the luck is, Johnny, how do you feel that you got Bs on the geography test today? And if he feels good about it, you could say, well, you're, you're lucky that you feel good about it. Right, and but then again, you don't want your kid to feel good about like C's and D's. Right. Without with this whole discussion, 
you know, I think it's very important to point out that, like, right now we're at the stage where we're introducing this idea that nobody has a free will to the world. People are still in the process of getting this. So a lot of these considerations about, like, how we teach kids that they don't have a free will, these, these considerations, to a great extent, are going to be left to future generations. Right. You know, once everybody's on go board with this, then, yeah, then the academics will take it up. You know, like, they'll come up with the, with the best strategies for, for teaching Right. Well, you and I are in this generation. We're trying to do this cable access show just announcing and hearkening the news like newscasters, that we are exploring the illusion of free will, and we found out there is no such thing as free will. The subsequent shows that George is putting together are, let's assume everyone gets it. How do we do the economic system, or how do we treat kids? I'm not really into that, because I don't know how, but we're not really at first base yet on teaching people there is no free will. We still want the debate shows. We want, you know, we can iron this all out another time, but if you want to start figuring it out today, I think the kids thing is... First of all, what age do you tell the child? That's the first thing. Yeah, and, and, and we'll get to that in a moment. Well, but then I can help but, you. But the reason this is important, Nick, is because, like, one of the reasons people don't, can't accept that we don't have a free will is because of the problems it po poses. Some people say, well, you know, society will collapse. There will be no criminal, criminal justice uh, system. Other people will say, well, what are we going to tell the kids? So, in other words, like, mm. this, this, this topic isn't so much... It, it's partly about what the world will be like when everyone gets it, but to a great extent, it's it's about helping people to understand. I see. So this is all under the umbrella, why don't people get it? And you're telling me people don't get it because they can't figure out this next step. So we should figure out the next step before we get everyone to get it because they, it's circular. They can't get it because they can't understand what would be the consequence of this uh, educational system question that you're raising. Absolutely. And then all we right. have the economic problem as well. But all right, you so, might be right. So I want to reiterate something you, you, be right, you, yeah. you raised before. Just the idea that like while we're teaching kids that absolutely nothing is up to us, we have to be teaching them that that knowledge is not licensed for them or anyone else to say to themselves, well, you know, I don't have a free will so I can do whatever I want and you, don't, you can't blame me. In other words, like that won't work. So we have to make sure that we're teaching kids that there is what, what, what we will refer to as pragmatic responsibility. We don't have fundamental responsibility because we don't have a free will, but we still have a pragmatic responsibility to do right. I wouldn't bring up the free will thing. I would just say to your kid, were you doing the best you could at the time? They're always going to say, yes, I, Daddy, I did the best I could at the time. And then you say, that's all I want. I don't really care if you, you're gay or not or you get straight A's or you're terrible at soccer. I just want to hear that you're trying the best you can at the time. They're going to say that 99 times out of 100 so you and your wife can rest easy that you're actually teaching no free will without bringing it up because once you say were you doing the best you could at the time, then the likelihood that they could put the next sentence with it, which is, well, if I did the very best I could at the time, it couldn't have been otherwise because if you're doing the very best you can at the time, you couldn't have done anything else. So then they'll get it ingrained to them that they don't have free will as long as you keep pushing in and digging down on the fact that they're always doing the best they can. I understand, but but what That's if... That's another way to teach it. But what if a kid says to you, like, you, you ask them, like, to do a chore, you know, and and they don't do it, and they say to you, listen, I didn't do it, but you can't blame me or punish me or hold, hold me accountable. I never said I was blaming you. I said you're responsible. You're blamelessly responsible. That's what This we have house to has responsibility with or without, now it's the year 2030, without responsibility, I mean, without blaming. There is no there is no blame in this house, but there is responsibility. You're responsible for walking the dog once a week, and if you don't do it, I'm not blaming you, but because you're responsible, I now have no choice but to withdraw something that you like. You can exactly, explain that to Exactly, them. and that you explain that in, in that way, they'll understand that it's not really up to them, but in order to maintain order and to just like have things go right, there has to be a system of rewards and punishments. So the kids will understand this. All right, now let's get to the question you want um, to really um, explore because it's a very important question. At what age do we start teaching these kids this? All right, well, there's no script, so I have to think about this. But my first thought is kids and the movie system, all, you know, Hollywood producers worry about what's G, what's PG, what's PG-13, what's the next one, PG-17, whatever, R. X. So there is an age appropriateness inherent in society for things so i don't know if there's a movie about no free will what re and there's no sex or violence or bad words 
if it's just about that we don't have free will, what rating would that get? Is that a, is it, say there's a Disney movie with songs, and it's all would that be a G-rated movie? I would think so. Yeah, I don't think there there's anything R about you know. Or PG thirteen ish. Yeah, I, I, even that. I, I mean, okay, so if it's going to be G and the kid goes, there still might be an age that the kid needs to acquire before he he or she can understand what is even meant by the term. Um, well, and actually, let's let's address. Like you that. said, if you tell a six month year old you don't have free will, how about a three year old? No, not yet. A six year old, I don't think they'll get it. Maybe around 10? So, no, no, dude. Think what? about this. Think about this. You can bring this up to kids as soon as they reflect the, um, an expression that leads you to believe that they're attributing free will to someone else. In other words, like, let's say um, oh. like Jimmy takes you know, Johnny's toy, right? And Johnny's saying, you know, he took my toy. You know, we should punish him. He's horrible. You know, I hate him and stuff like that. He is like, even though he doesn't know he's doing it, he's attributing free will to, to Jimmy. So you may so say... Basically, or let me finish. So basically, that's the time. In other words, when he's expressing, you know, through what he's saying, through how he's behaving, that he's attributing free will to, to someone else, if he understands the concept of, of like, a, uh, attribution to someone else, he can understand how, well, you want to know, um, Johnny, you know, yes, he took your toy, you know, yes, you know, he did it, but you want to know something? It really wasn't. It really wasn't up to him. You know, like he, the universe made him do it. So, like, let's get the toy back, but let's not blame him. You might just say, uh, you know, that other kid doesn't have what we call free will, but he was. He does have different genetics, and he is being raised differently from you, so he acts differently. There's nothing wrong with the way he's acting per se, but in our family. You know, we, we have a different way of uh, attributing responsibility. So there's nothing worse about him, the other kid. It's just he has different genetics, and he's being raised differently. So his family rules are different than our family rules. Yeah. When you say you hate him, you can fear him, and I don't want you around him, but you can't hate him. He's just being raised differently. And, and here's where that, where that behavior is acceptable, so, so you don't hate anybody. And here's something that actually we do now that we can ap apply to this. In other words, like, you know, um, nursery school teachers, you know, um, uh, child care workers, um, when they're dealing with young kids and somebody does something wrong, what they'll do is, like, they'll, they'll start asking the kid, well, why did you do that? Or why do you think Jimmy did that? You know, they'll, they'll try to get at the reason for that. And, like, so that is actually, you know, that's the first step in explaining to the kid, in other words, like, you know, Jimmy, um, why did Jimmy, I don't know, he always does that. He he always steals, you know, takes the other kid's That's toys. That's just his nature. Right, so then we ask Johnny, all right, well, why do you think he does that? And then you might you might say, well, yeah, apparently that's that's how you know in his household apparently it's all right to do that or something like that. In other words, this th and and that you know through that question and answer thing, even and we're doing this today. That's teaching kids that that we do things for reasons that there's a cause for why we do things. Okay. So yeah. So in other words, like so so essentially we but are you didn't answer my question at what age can you start bringing this up to the child right and and, and the 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 the, um, the answer is you know because different children develop um differently different ages when they start attributing let let's say um a kid does something wrong right and he starts feeling really guilty and starts crying and stuff you know from that that he's attributing free will to himself and so, like, at that age, whether it's, ah. like, two, two and a half, whatever, it could be one and a half, you say to him, listen, um, don't feel bad about this. Don't feel bad about yourself. You know, we're going to try to see that you don't do it again, but, but it's wrong to feel bad about this uh, uh, because you don't have, you know, because it really wasn't up to you. You had, you had no, you know. Actually, when you get a kid who's more like a teenager, 13, 14, 15, they get involved in these crazy romantic relationships, and then there's a breakup, they tend to take it very personally and get very depressed. If you could say that's unlucky that he, he or she broke up with you or he dumped you and put a video of you or whatever, you know, and you're feeling shamed and horrible, that's just the uh, luck or unluck of the draw. It's not like anything wrong with you uh, personally. It might, it might help the kid take things less personally. And you want to know something, think about this. Because yeah. your neuroses are far less personal when you don't attribute – because anything that happens to you could easily just happen to another – I think you should teach the kid meditation 
and how to be at one with and just instead of think but feel. All right, that's what it feels like to be broken up with. You're bringing up the case of a teenager that's feeling bad about himself or something like this. Now, a think breakup, th- yeah. Right, think this through. Think this through. If we start teaching toddlers, you know, really, you know, young kids that they don't have free will, and we continue this teaching through K through, you know, six and K through nine and stuff, by the time they become teach uh, teenagers, they'll understand this fact so well that that chances are, if they've gone through those years of, of education, they won't feel bad about themselves because they've already been conditioned to not blame themselves for stuff like that. But then again, a kid who gets bullied could still hate that other kid, but without free will, I think they should just be mildly annoyed or upset with the word hate. In other words, you'll still have these emotions of wanting to avoid a person or fearing them or not liking them, but I think the moder- the, the emotions will be modified from you know, revenge and like today, the other day there was a kid in school with a knife and shootings. It's all based on hate. I think the emotions of all children in the future without free will will be modified. So they'll still have the girl and the guy getting breaking up and crying and upset, but no one's going to be stalking them with a gun thinking it was malicious intent and they purposely went out to hurt me. I mean, it'll be similar childhoods, but not as intense. That's a great point. In other words, like, yeah, let's – with the bully situation, yeah, right? Yeah, or the bully up situation or now. Yeah, bully situation. You know, the kid attributes free will to the bully. The kid hates the bully, wants the bully punished. Dad, wants, he wants the bully's dead. And, yeah. and and perhaps dead. Yeah. So what happens? Like to the extent that he understands, fine. He may stay away from the bully, um, but what will he hate? He may hate the universe for making the bully do that. In other words, like what what, what teaching the kids that they don't have a free will does. It transfers that anger, you know, from their, you know, from it being directed to a human being to it being directed to like the Big Bang, you know, blame the Big Bang. The, you know, we don't know why the Big Bang caused the bill, bully to, um, to, to hurt right. the kids. So, but there still has to be emotions because the conditioning, if you're the, if you're the bully and you don't feel badly about it, you'll keep doing it. So you still have to have the emotions telling you what's right or wrong. I mean, you can't just do whatever you want and say, oh, I'm a bully because there's no free will. You have to have the, the educator say, you don't have free will and you're bullying these kids, but I don't have free will and you're, you're suspended for a few months because you're, that's not allowed. Right. Or, or uh, So there has to be consequences. I like the idea where what, everybody says they don't have free will instead of one. So the bully says, I'm sorry, I don't have free will, I'm sorry. And then the, the teacher says, well, I'm sorry, but bullying's not allowed, so I have, no more choice. To I have no choice but to put you in detention. I know, but so no, no, that, a hierarchy. There's, there's, there's more understanding that can come about. In other words, like, in, instead of like having the bully feel bad about himself for being a bully, you, you explain to him, listen, your bullying is not your fault, but you have to think of the people you're bullying. You have to get the person, the bully, to, to, um, to grow their conscience, their empathy for the other person. In other words, you know, you want them to understand that they shouldn't be doing that not because it reflects on them, but because it's hurting other people. In other words, like, yeah, the idea that, like, yes, uh, you, you know, it wasn't your free will, so, like, you know, and it, I don't have a free will either. Right, let's do the that, commercial. That works, but, but you can really explain this at a more fundamental level. All right, so, like, yeah, we've got about almost 44 minutes left. Um, Three and a half, do the commercial. Right. Um, so, basically, all right. So, all right, we've explained this. This is show 157, and the next step in this, okay, because, like, you know, this TV show goes in, you know, here in White Plains, Manhattan. It's on YouTube. But, like, the next step for all this is for a major Hollywood, New York City, international producer, documentary producer, to create a film teaching the world, the entire world, you know, a film that will make $100, $200 million because it, this, this, this question is so essential to the entire world why we don't have a free will, and how it affects us all. So, okay, we got about three minutes left. So we're on cable access, and this is probably the Manha- speaking to Manhattan now. We have been doing this show. We've quit several times. We don't think anybody's getting it. So when we're live, we're live every four or five weeks on MNN2. Please call in and give us some ideas on how to get a movie made of this movement no free will, the new human consciousness. Or go to his website, causalconsciousness.com or .net? .net. .com. Causal, causal, C-A-U, causalconsciousness.com. Your email's on there, right? 
write him a letter and let's get this into a movie or a show or on CNN as a debate show. We want to get the free will, no free will debate out of academic circles, popularize it into mainstream America or the world. We are human beings. We deserve to get this right or at least debate it. And the truth is, I mean, you don't really have to go through us. If, if you know a producer, pitch the idea to him. It'll be wise for you to kind of like consult with us because we probably have explored this topic more than, you know, virtually everyone on the planet. You know, nobody's like devoting as much time and initiative to this than, than, than Nick and I are. But, but do this on your own. You don't need us to create this movie. And so, like, you know, after the movie's created, after the entire world is awakened to this prospect that, wow, absolutely nothing's up to us, there's going to be a, a tremendous interest, interest in this, right? So the next step, the second phase, is to have a weekly series, TV debate show, CNN, one of the major networks, or maybe, you know, um, broadcast in the entire world, where you have like the religious people and certain philosophers presenting their case for free will and you have scientists and people like Nick and me you know refuting free will and explaining why this all matters this is another show that will attract tremendous interest and really it's more than that because this is this isn't just about making money it'll make the producers like millions of dollars really hundreds of millions but this is also about creating a much much better world and it's also about doing the right thing it's the truth and we don't want to feel like we're spinning our wheels here, going nowhere. So we need some encouragement that we can get to the next. I mean, obviously, the hu humankind is going to go on for many years after. This is going to happen eventually. Why not you? Why not now? Let's get the free will, no free will debate going. We're not, we know we're right, but we're not arrogant enough to say we're right. I mean, we want the debate to come to Main Street, not an ad campaign just saying there's no free will. We want to give the free will people a chance to debate with us. Okay? 15 seconds. All right. Why so it's important. Searle. So again, this is like, yeah, um, don't take it from us why this is important. John Searle, 13th most cited philosopher post-1900, said, for free will to be accepted by the world in illusion would be a bigger revolution than Einstein and all the other greats. Thanks for watching.